Hello everyone, uh, Jacques here from Dapper Shaves. We're going to do another uh, a shave. Before we get into the equipment we're going to use, um, for those of you that don't know, this is the educational channel. So, the reviews and stuff you're not going to find here, but actually about shaving and razors and so forth, you will find a lot of value. So, in that regard, um, Try and watch the entire video, there's always a, uh, technical stuff that's being shared and, and people tend to lose out on that and it will definitely make a difference in your shave, at least that's my opinion. So, um, welcome to the Amazon Rainforest. I've previously um, done a a shave with a Wayne Butcher using the soap when it was launched. It's a collaboration with the Razor Company and Master Soap Creations. And I, I did an initial thought on the soap. I'll put in a link here if you want to go and look at it and see if maybe something changed in the way I perceive things now. This is the Badger brush I'm going to use. Um, I'm going to link a video here, this is the one where I've fundamentally um, modified the tips. So if you're interested and you've got a brush that's maybe a bit scrubby and you maybe want to change it, that's worth looking at. The razor we're going to use is a straight razor, um, but once again, Wet shaving, the fundamentals and, and what I teach here applies to if you use a straight razor, if you use a double edge razor, a single edge razor, um, all of these things still apply. So the razor is a boker. This boker is 100 years old. It's a king cutter. So it's from the 1920s. It is a beautiful razor. Um, it's a 6 8 razor with a bit of a French point, I won't call it a round point, and it's definitely not a square point. It's carbon steel, there's jumping on the top, nice um, large jumping, which I actually quite like a lot. The razor has got a, a slight bit of a smile, especially towards the heel, and then the other important thing for me is it's got a little bit of a belly going. So these are preference things and what I like in razors. I've restored um, a couple hundred razors um, over the years. So that's my preference. I'm going to link a video here about um, uh, what razor you should get. That question gets asked a lot and then there I discuss things like a belly is the type of steel and so forth. I load from the puck and I also face lather. So face lathering is something that um, I believe brings a lot of value. I always go back to the fundamentals. When you go to a barber, what they will do is they will um, they will use a brush and a quality soap and they will apply it on your face and um, it will sit there and they'll prep the skin and then they'll shave you. And uh, it's one of the reasons why I use a straight razor. If you go to a barber, they will use a straight razor um, device. You won't see them using a DE razor or so forth. I have seen um, some guys use the lit. Um, I'm not a big fan of that, but if you go to a proper barber, you won't see them using that. Right, face lathering. A lot of folk bow lather and, uh, and because they struggle face lathering. And with, with face lathering, there's a, there's a bit of a technique, at least for me. I like to generate a, a bit of a paste like we're doing here. And a brush dynamics, when you work the soap, it will suck in the soap and then it will push it out to the sides, outside of the brush. 
So what I do is I just take what's on the outside of the brush and just put it somewhere else. You see, it's not in a bowl, it's on my face. And then I continue loading. So if you've done this a couple of times, you quickly realize how much you need to load and so forth. But once you've loaded enough, um, you start working this paste through the brush again. And exactly the same thing. I, I tap it down, it will soak lather will get into the brush and then it will mitigate its way to the outside. That's how a brush works. So I just work it back into the core to make sure the brush is hydrated properly with soap. And then I start adding water and I repeat the cycle. So when I say I add water, You can use a spray bottle. I just add water on top of these bristles. You can also maybe dip it in, but I just do that so that the water runs into the core. And what's on the top, I just spray slowly across the, the paste I have. And then I work it a bit, and as I work it, more lather will form and it will mitigate to the outside of the brush. Yeah, so this you can take off with your finger, put it back into the core, work it in. Other folks roll the brush on the outside. But what you keep doing is you keep diluting this paste until you have got um, very thin hydrated lather. Um, and while you're doing that, you're massaging the skin. So that's a little bit basics about um, lathering. So if you're a bow latherer and you've struggled face lathering, um, this is the best technique I've, I've found. And once you've got the brush hydrated and you've got enough lather in the pore, then you can um, only start doing the painting bit. by adding water and then I mean this thing is loaded with soap and then you should have plenty of this quality lather um, for two or three pass shave. Uh, we talked about bellies on the razor. Okay so this razor, um, like all my razors, I strap um, before and after use. I'm a firm believer that you cannot overstrap a razor with good technique. So both on Instagram and um, on YouTube, my um, pinned videos are around strapping. So if you want to learn about strapping, go and have a look there. As I said, this channel is all about education. If you're interested in honing and how I finish razors, I've got videos out on that and more will come over time. So I'll put in a link here or you can within the channel just search for honing or headstones and you'll get something to your liking. So I've used light blue um, many a time now. It's a fantastic soap. Look how this is sitting on my hand. So all of this goodness I just put on top. Typically this would be in the bowl. It's uh, sorry that's a bit high. Very nice lager going here. There's plenty for another two passes. I've got plenty on my face. We can pop that. So my skin is prepped, yeah, I cleaned off all the dirt with the soap, with lathering, I've massaged the skin, raised the bristles, softened them up. I've done all the work you would get somebody in a salon or in a proper barber shop 
This is exactly what they would be doing. Okay. So now comes the next bit, which will be my first pass. So I'll show many different ways of doing passes. So today is going to be no different. I'm going to go, which for me is essentially a with the grain pass. On my moustache, it will be, uh, on my upper lip, it will be uh, across the grain. And on my neck, I'll go um, against the grain, which, I mean, these hairs grow everywhere. I grip uh, two fingers one side and the ring finger on the other and then I move the scales a bit so that I've got a nice firm balance and a little bit of a pinch um, on where your finger lies. You can play around with this. Some folk put three fingers on you and, and one there. Um, do whatever is comfortable for you. So I mentioned honing, this razor was honed um, with Azano Naguras on a, a black Arkansas. A black Novaculite. As I finish most, most razors. Quickly about the soap. I said I don't do reviews of soap, um, but I need to um, talk about the soap. It's a very good one. A world class soap in my opinion. But besides all the um, the protection you want from a soap and the slickness and the residual sneakers. Besides all those basic standard things you expect from a razor, ah, from a soap. It's a soap that lathers incredibly well. Its laverability is nice. Badger brushes, bore brushes, synthetic brushes, um, soft water, hard water, it all depends. Um, but you can lather um, MSC soaps any way you like. If you don't, if you more advanced um, user, and you like more uh, wet loading or what they refer to as the Marco method of loading, um, this soap is just as incredible. And that's what I'm referring to um, with laverability. It gives you all that world class stuff and it's easy to lather up. Right, I think we're also going to go um, across the grain. This is how I hold the razor for this track. So the, the handle is not pointing towards my shoulder or the other hand, it's out the way. Yeah, I've got a bit more control, it's stable and there's another pressure point. So I've got leverage here, leverage here, leverage here, leverage here and leverage here. It's a very stable blade. All right, so let's uh, repeat on the other side.
Okay, so that's, I didn't talk on this side to show you that, um, you know, it's not a slow process. What I like about a French point or square points is you can really nicely get into the close tight spots. So boker, I normally do a little bit of a, a history with it. This is the only boker I have. I've owned and um, maintained boker razors for many customers. This king cutter vintage blade shaves very similar to um, to a new boker celebrated. Very good razor. If you're ever interested in buying a boker, um, you can go for it. Good quality stuff. Please do remember that no production razor comes shave ready. They will have a bevel on. You will have to send it to somebody or do it yourself to go and refine that bevel to shave ready. Plenty left. So, quickly, I can't read. Um, Boker was founded in 1837. Fundamentally, is a, cutley, a cut, cutlery importer. And in 1867, they built a factory in Solingen. And in 1869, they adopted um, the tree brand. So that is the, um, the logo right there, Boker, the tree brand. And that little tree uh, stamp has changed over the years. From when they were founded up until today, that tree has changed. So that is what you would use to go and um, date your razor. So that's how I know this razor is from the 1920s. So, um, Boker is also well known for some other brands they've done, including um, Red Indian, Edelweiss, Bicycle, Eclipse. It's all um, Boker, Boker brands. So, they've been around for 150 years. They've gone through two world wars. including the bombing of the factory in the Second World War. Very resilient company. passionate about what they do and they've got quite an extensive range. They do knives, pocket knives, razors, cutlery, axes um, and many other things. So diverse company, all in the steel business. Once again, I refer to the heel as the power part of the blade. And you'll see me in the tough, dense areas use the heel a lot because it's right at my grip and that's where the blade's going to be the most stable and provide the most powerful cut. So over time it's important to learn how to use um, the entire width of the blade. So 
So what you see is um, because the the toe is the furthest away and the, the has got the least stable and powerful cutting slice, I support it with my finger this side, which mimics the grip on the heel and now I've got a very stable edge all over. So thus far you guys have seen um, some dovos. Vintage and modern. So I think Boker is also a sol engine. I think maybe the next video we're going to do a couple of Sheffield razors. There's many more Solingen razors. But let's tackle a couple of vintage. Um, vintage Sheffield. With my initial thoughts on the soap video, I shaved the Wagen Butcher, which is Sheffield. But that was before um, I did the history bit on the risers. So Wayden Butcher has got a very interesting and very powerful story. Um, and more importantly, at the scale they did business, it's, it's absolutely staggering. Um, let me give you a sneak insight. We're talking 1830, 1830 to the 1850s. Yeah? Back in um, the US, the Wild West. Wayden Butcher exported from Sheffield in London um, to the US um, via boat, ocean crossing, and then moving their stuff via a horse to wherever it needs to go. So as an example, Wayden Butcher produced and shipped 11 tons of files, wooden files and steel files, 11 tons a week. So that was just some of the stuff they did. Um, there's many other aspects, but we'll cover that um, in, a, in a future video. So this was um, a two-par shave, and I must admit, I'm not today 100% on my game. I don't know why. So let's see if I've missed any, any spots. I did here yeah, underneath the jaw transition area, which is always a difficult one. There is grow all over here, so I can do a little touch up here. I was sloppy here. The side, nice and smooth, but immediately I can feel, feel a couple of stubbles there. This wasn't bad. And a little clean up there. So, let's quickly hit that. The rest of the soap I use, um, leave as, and use as a, um, a nourishment for the skin. Wash my skin clean before I put anything else on my post shave. If it's a proper soap, it would have the necessary nourishment in the um,
to help and protect and feed the skin. Okay, so that was a, a two-pass shave with a Boker King cutter using um, the fantastic uh, light blue. By the way, the scent, I'm not a scent guy, but this is one I can remember, not because I know. It's um, based on Dolce and Gabbana's um, deep blue, I think. <laughs> now I'm doubting myself again. Um, it's a fantastic scent and apparently dead on to the... Um, to that fragrance range. Okay, so last soap out the brush, which some guys would have used for the third pass or touch up or I don't know. So I use this for post shave and then I can rinse the rest of the brush out and get that out of the way. So feedback on this brush, um, after the modification um, bristle tips I did on it, um, this brush is um, a very nice dense brush um, and I was happy with it but every now and again especially in winter or when my skin was struggling a bit, um, it was a bit sensitive on my skin so all I did was wanted to soften that up and I'm very happy, happy with that result. My skin is slightly dry um, and I didn't even feel this brush, so um, I'm very happy. It's nicely rinsed. By the way, this is what it looks like now. Really, really dense, dense, dense brush this. Well worth the money. Look at this, 24 millimeter. In any case, um, the soap I normally just um, take out the last bit of um, wet soap residue. If you were wet loader, a wet loader, make sure you um, clean that nicely, and then you can put this away. The razor, um, I'll show you guys now. I run warm water over it and then I strap with my fingers over the edge away from the edge on both sides while the water is running on there to make sure I get all soap off, off the edge that is the biggest maintenance hurdle uh, people must they rinse them off they look clean but there's always a little bit of residue in addition to that I will take a cloth and then I would do a strap to make sure I get all the water off. And then I put it away some... <clears throat> away to the side, open, and then I can clean up here, clean up my post shave, and then when I'm done and everything's out of the way and I'm not distracted, I can go back to the razor, which is in a safe position. Um, make sure it's dry in between the scales, go and strap it and then go and pack it away so that the next time I take it I know it's ready to go and there is not going to be any issues with the edge. So um, I have done some experimentation. If you clean the edge properly and strap it on a well-defined edge you will get 80 to 100 shades is very easy if you maintain it well. If you do not take soap off properly of the edge and in particularly not strap after that, 
Your aged longevity will plummet by 60% easy. You will struggle to get 20 or maybe even less shaves out of that. Right, I'm happy with that. Nice and smooth, my skin's wet. Um, you can take a cloth now, uh, pat yourself down um, and put a moisturizer on. I use the um, hydration gel from grooming department with a 2% hyaluronic acid. That is my go-to 90% 90 of the time, 95% of the time. And I've got a sneaky suspicion we have just run out. So I'm just going to take a bit, last bit out the bottle. You need to apply this onto a damp skin. Yo! Still in one piece, one bounce and a catch, but that could have been disastrous. Nak sit nie, ek het nie kleere aan heen gaan. Wat is dit? Glas. <laughs> yeah. So obviously my 11 year old heard something drop and came running to the bathroom and as I dropped this bottle, I also dropped my towel. So I just had to stop her. In any case, so that is my post shave out of the way. A little bit of early morning um, catching practice here in the shower. Once again, thank you for joining me um, on the shave. There are not much I want to add it on Boker. Um, great brand. If you can find a vintage blade, awesome. Um, but you will not be. Um, Upset if you get a new one. Um, Boker is a fantastic brand. The quality control I think is also better than some of the other brands. Um, and once again, maybe this is an unfair statement to the other guys. I've worked on, I don't know, maybe seven or eight razors. So that's my sample experience. Keep well and uh, see you guys on the next shave.